thank you for inviting me here and um, for embracing, for Indaba embracing my work so much outside. It's so exciting. So I hope you have a chance to have a go and climb on swing and maybe not climb too much, but swing as much as you like. So, um, so I'm London born, London bred um, until I die and then I'm dead. And then this is um, my family on my dad's side. This is my great grandfather, and they were, he, had, um, he was a child of the workhouse in Britain and had gone to the circus. So he was in the French traveling circus until it became a permanent one in Paris. And this is my great grandmother. And um, they didn't know what to do with her, really. She just joined the circus, and she, so why not, why not become a high diver? Like that's quite scary. Anyway, so she was a high diver. And I didn't really realize quite what that was until I watched a film called Carousel. Or Carnival. So I think she had to em embrace the unknown. So my family have lived in the same house in a working class area in Holloway that's a very migratory area, very multicultural, and um, we've all lived together, um, very similar to the last speaker. And this is, when he left the circus, his, it's a long story, I'm not going to go into it too much, but his mother found him, went in search of him at the circus and brought him back to London to live in this house. But you see, they, they're quite characters, they didn't quite fit in with the London ways. And then my, my uncle, my grandfather in the middle, um, then got his French, there was some a second or third cousin or something, is my French grandmother, and um, she was a bit more elegant, I think. And this is her father, who was a salon painter in Paris. So they all lived in London, um, in this house, in the middle of this working class area, in a very bohemian lifestyle. My dad, my grandmother even kept my dad there during the war instead of getting them sent away. And then my dad was a classical musician. And there's my dad, I, that's me in the corner. I you didn't really like it when he practiced. I, I can't play an instrument and I can't speak French, so that's, I'm rubbish. And then this is my, <laughs> this is my mom and this is me again and making. So we made and made and made in our house. And also, at the time when I was little, there was uh, spaceships, and my grandma... But this picture on the right is very significant to me, because although we lived in this place that was tenanted, and um, uh, all those houses weren't very good at that time, my grandmother made her house into this French salon, um, where she had all her family from Paris would paint all, all, the, all the, you know, the walls and the the thing in front of the fireplace and everything. And she just lived this elegant, she lived her fantasy, she didn't mind. And I think that was, that's something that I've learned, that actually you can make your own life. You don't, there's lots of things around you, but you can also make it for yourself. And I used to like watching telly a lot, and particularly banana splits. So I think I'm gonna blame a bit of my color sense on the banana splits. Then I grew up. And, um, and then I had lots of influences, but the key ones that I remember were Andy Warhol and Memphis and Hockney paints the stage. Not Hockney in general, but this one exhibition he did at the, um, I went to see when I was a very impressionable age, and he just transformed these spaces into something that was magical. And I just thought, wow, that's an amazing thing that I could possibly do. And then the other thing was, I met this guy, Luke, along the way. I've been stunned by Henry the Ward. And he is part of his psychobilly tribe. And there was a point in my life where I felt that I needed to, um, sort, I needed to sort of re-evaluate what I, who I was, and that, you know, you go from college and you do things and you think you're meant to do everything like everybody else does and have children, do everything, and actually you can do what you want. And he'd always done what he Wanted. And in a way, he became my muse. I thought, oh, wow, that's, um, that's how I need to think. I need to just do exactly 
lead the, my life in the way I want it, not the way my parents wanted, nobody else, just me. And that, to me, is about belonging. So when I was at home, because it was such a particular family, I, I only belonged there, and I was always an outsider everywhere else. And it took me years and years and years, and I think probably until I found somebody like Luke, I thought, actually, we can live this funny lifestyle together. And, um, and this is where I live, and I have my studio there, and I can make and do whatever I want in it. And that, for me, is my sense of belonging. My sense of belonging isn't about um, having loads and loads of friends and, and having a tribe, like Luke's got a tribe. My sense of belonging, because also I was a middle child, and I was always three, three in a bedroom, so I never had my own space. So for me, it's about space, it's about having a place for, where, for, for me to escape to and to create the things that I want to do. So sometimes I work on my own. My little dog who does feature in this, Lemmy, he's dead now, but I'm getting a new puppy next Saturday, so um, he, he's a Westie as well. And then sometimes I work with Luke. And we make things. We just like making lots of things. And we went and did this project in Melbourne where when we got there, <laughs> they didn't have anything. So we just had to get pens and paper, pens and bits of wire to cut, to draw circles, and we made a big installation with very little, but with lots of people. So, I went, so, because I feel like that I be, I've travelled a lot in various places, but I feel that I belong in London. It's a place where I feel um, it's the most multicultural place that I've ever been, where I was brought up, and it's what I understand. So then there's a lot of projects that I work on where people have come from other places and they don't feel like they belong. So, so how, you know, we can make belonging. How do we do that? How do, can we approach that in our work? Um, so I think one of the things that's really important is about looking around you, and looking is important, but it's quite passive. So what you've got to do is start seeing things. So you need to look at things and then see where, what they mean to you and what other depths they are, and not just pass over things. Um, I obviously have an obsession with carnival things. And because of my circus upbringing. And so this manifested in a project in Mexico where we wanted to... Uh, sh there was a request to look at how do you, how do you um, think about the way you work. And the thing that I think about very much is about looking and seeing, and seeing things as if you're a child. N don't get... You, it's, it's too easy not it, just to miss things, that you need to go back out there and see everything fresh as if you'd never seen it before, and then let that go in your mind, and then see how that works. So with us, with this um, concept, we made this huge camera obscura in the med middle of Zocala Square in Mexico City, and it was all based on a pinhole camera. So we made it literally a walk-in pinhole camera, and this is what you saw. And what was so brilliant, it was a free um, piece of work for people to go in. Everybody could uh, see it. It was... Nobody realized that through a hole, you could get a video on the wall in color. It was upside down, but you could get it. And so this was a revelation to people. And they started thinking, oh, how does the picture go in my camera? And all those sorts of things. And so it made all these connections. So all these sort of simple things that we do every day, you can actually make work that make people rethink it. Um, strong love. So. I was asked to do a project about, um, about love at the South Bank, and they gave me this quote by Martin Luther King about love, about the strength of love, and they said that you could do anything you wanted with that quote. And they gave me this site, not dissimilar space to artscapes. I really love concrete surroundings. And I had been to Delhi, and at the time, there had been this... Um, temple that had been there for a really long time, and then this flyover was just coming across it. And it was suddenly this juxtaposition of these colours and this really brutalist concrete just had this, some, I don't know, it did something to me. So, there, then when 
I actually got down to thinking about what we were going to do for this Temple of Agape. I literally sat on a train and I just did this drawing. And everything that I, everywhere I'd visited, all the different places I'd seen, I just seemed to put into this piece of work. And then it just happened. You just made it from that drawing. And I wanted to include all the quote. And this was the first time I got lots of people in. I put out an Instagram, got lots of people in to come and help me paint. And they painted, and then we do pictures every day, and there was this community of making this work together. And, and the sense of love between us as well, just because we had fun, and it was good, and it's not about being isolated. And so this was a piece. So this was completely painted by just us. Nobody had painted um, it before. When we made the whole piece, and it's double-sided, it's got stairs, it's double-sided. I mean, it was ambition. I do have this thing where I just think, oh, yeah, okay, I'll do it, and I do. Um, so, and I think it had, like, over a million and a half people in it. But what it was really important for me was the outside was about colour, because even though sometimes colour can um, over, sort of be stronger than the message you're trying to get, and actually this was about love being strong, but on the inside it had no colour, and it was about the light coming in, a natural light, and it was about being contemplative, and so there were very, very many forms of love. This is, I'll just put this in because this is my mantra. And then um, making things together. So this is a really big thing, whereas I just showed you groups of people together. This one is about um, working with poets and working with other um, amazing artists. So you might know the poet Lem Cizé. Um, he's an amazing guy. And uh, I was working with him on something, and I was stuck with this project. And he wrote this tweet that day, and I read that tweet, and I was like, suddenly, I think Luke went out in the evening, and I just did this, made this model, and Luke came back, and I went, oh, here, look, and what I've done. <laughs> and then it became this. <laughs> and it was just, it was the inspiration of his words. There was something about the gates, about eye contact, about people passing each other that just made me feel like I wanted to make this piece of work. And then that led on to work in hospitals. I've done lots of projects in hospitals, but this particular one I like a lot um, with Lem Cizé again. And he went in. When you work with children in hospitals, you know, they're, they're, they're not like children in schools. You know, they have, they're on medication. They have a lot of different concentration spans. And so um, we, you have to be much gentler working with them, and your expectations should be just not too much, but actually you, then you can become so amazed. And these young children who were very, very ill um, um, came, did these beautiful poems, and you can read some there. And then I went back and did workshops with them and made this font. So then in this dining room in the hospital, they had... Um, their words on the world wall and their work on the wall. And I just made that happen. And this was a really beautiful piece. This was a seven-year-old, and he spoke half Urdu and half English, and so he wrote his poem in both languages, which was really sweet. And then this was a word they just liked. They loved the word dazzle. So I... Um, put dazzle on the wall. I think the nurses were quite scared. The nurses are always scared of me. The nurses are really scared of me. And I'll tell you this now, this, so this, this particular project. So I'm usually in hospitals just allowed to be in the hallways, and I'm not often allowed in, in, the, ho in the bedrooms, because the bedrooms are a bit like sacred area. But I got this art project to do um, these, these bedrooms. And so I thought, yeah, go for it. Like, what do kids' bedrooms, they want to have all this crazy pattern and it's going to be really good. And I showed the nurses and they were really nice to me. And then when I left, they rang the commissioner and said, don't let that woman back into the hospital. <laughs> she, she's going to give all the children illnesses and it's going to be really bad. And then, and I was like, okay, let's calm down, let's calm down. Okay, I can calm it down a little bit. And actually, maybe what we need to do is we need to go to the patients and see what the patients think, if they think it's um, as crazy as it was. So we made these little models, 
and um, took them to the patients, and they absolutely loved them because they weren't really that crazy. They were just more, they were just friendly and more like a child would have a bedroom. And as you can see, we then went back to the nurses and then went back to the big board. And because the patients said yes, they said yes. And so this is the, these are the bedrooms. And they're not as crazy, you see. They're just gentle. And then, and then on another... Because I work all sort of, my head is all in different places and some things are personal and some things about other people giving me the work to do. And, but this piece is particularly personal, but I've made it public. So I was commissioned to do a 200 meter by 300, three meter by 200 meter piece in a hospital in um, Sweden. And um, what do I do? I don't know. And so I thought, Oh, I've been collecting these mood, these colour tweets for two years in about because I've been working. I've only just finished this project in January, and I started on it in like 2013. It's been ages, like four years or something. And um, and I thought, what do I do? And I thought, well, I've been speaking in uh, colour, my mood in the morning and my mood at night. So I thought, well, that's very interesting. Colour and mood, and even though it's my moods, it still can resonate with other people over a year. So I downloaded archives and ni nice from Twitter. <laughs> so I downloaded my archive, and then I mapped it all out. What my colour was in the morning, what it was at night. But then I thought stripes were a bit boring. And, um, and I wanted to have, because it was 200 meters you had to walk along, it was a journey through the whole of this north-south of this hospital. So I just wanted to um, break it up a little bit, which is more like my head, because actually, even though I might be black in the morning, pink at night, in the middle, there were loads of other colors going on. So that's what the piece became. So this is just how long the piece is. And then they said, OK, because it took ages and we had to work out the panelling. That was boring, that whole bit. So it was about three and a half years. And then finally, one year, we start painting it. So I just got loads of people in again and we painted. And the music's by Luke Morgan, the Highliners. <laughs> and so this is what the corridor was like before, and this is it now, and it's completely finished now. And this is how long it is. <laughs> that was the first stage, and now this is the whole thing. I obviously don't run very fast. <laughs> Where'd it go? And I have speeded it up as well. <laughs> so, wide open. This was a really interesting project in, um, in Graz, in Austria. It was an art project, and it was about how all the people who'd come from various other countries were not integrated into the life of, of Graz. And the, this art project was to try and bring people together. And we, and I, what I think is so fascinating about using pattern is that you can use pattern in a way that if you don't put loads of references in front of the people and you just give them some stickers and you give them a grid, then they can do exactly what they like. And interestingly, patterns then have, when you complete them, they seem to look like they come from certain places, but actually 
they don't necessarily. It could be a five-year-old who did it, you know, so they don't have that reference of, of pattern history. So this, the, the piece, this was the piece, it was a big structure outside a building, and it was all about open doors, and so it was about many, many doors that anybody could come in and out of. And then we went, we did have to pay these teenagers <laughs> at this youth club, because they didn't really want to do it at first, but then they got really into it, and then it was so fantastic. And they made such beautiful patterns. So the most complex pattern, the third on the right, was by the guy who was the gang leader. So I, you know, I thought that was, and he put hearts in it, even in front of his friends. <laughs> and, uh, and then they were made into banners. And this is the final piece. And then inside the space, it was where all, all the different groups came together and there was a big cookery each week. Different groups of people made their uh, traditional food and everybody shared. And it was just a really, really beautiful project. Now, I'm going to pay two minutes of this film and then I'm going to do the last three minutes um, because this film is four minutes. But it's a really lovely film. So I worked on a project this year. You know we had Grenfell, the, the um, housing estate that burnt down. So there was a housing estate eight years ago that also had lots of fatalities in it. And the, art, the gallery, South London Gallery, have been building the community back up to make them feel strong. And I, were, I was the first artist to work on, in the, on this project um, in this new art block for these kids. So I'll just play it and I'll be quiet for a few minutes. So this is a really exciting day. As you can hear, there's lots of people doing art. I'm Morag Myerskov, I'm a designer and artist. And at the moment, I'm at the opening of the art block. Very pleased to welcome you to this celebration of the opening of Art Block. Art Block is part of Open Plan, which is a bigger programme played out across three estates, local to South London Gallery, with the aim of bringing artists into the everyday life of residents, but also with the aim of involving residents more in the life of the South London Gallery. It's a new art block where the kids can come and just do art, make things and just enjoy themselves. They had had a space that they had made their own and it was an amazing identity, little small space. And then they were given this wonderful new space. It was a white walled new building that it didn't belong to them. So the whole part of my brief was to come and make a space that they belong to. So the way I approached that was to get them to make the art. So I did workshops with them, pattern workshops, word workshops and various things. And then out of it, I took their work and then I transformed it into the space that you can see now. My name is Kudada and I'm nine years old. At one of the workshops, I did a little bit of art and we had to design our own kind of like picture. So there was kind of shapes and we had to make our own picture out of it. The thing that I like about the new place is that the new place is big because the old place was too smooth for me to dance, but now the big space is better for me to do that. And there's lots of different colours on the walls. My um, project is named The Club Under My House, and we got that from one of the workshops with the young people where we had a poet that came in and he worked with them. What, what, what is this, this, this place? Maybe it will be in the arts, the, the art club. A club, okay. Do you want to write that down? A club under your house. I like that. If you had a club under your house, what would that club be? What would go on there? What would you like people to feel like when they see the art? Happy. Okay, I think that's really nice. This is about a response, a piece of work last year that was a response to all the bombings that we've had in London and about trying to sort of just bring some joy and peace into um, a quite fractious London.
So I just want that you all need to remember to play. And that is what the piece outside is really about. Um, this was the initial sketch for the piece outside. And, um, and the brief was really, more ag, here you are. <laughs> and I thought that, you know, when you're here and you're sitting down all day and everything, it would just be really great to go outside and just relax and, um, you know, have some fun and then come in again and listen to everybody and have fun as well. So this is the, I work with Luke on this as well, and this is, we draw it up in SketchUp. I draw a sketch, we do SketchUp. And then what we did was really wonderful. We um, went and um, we asked Juanita, who's been amazing and I love her, um, went and got some, got, I sent out a little kit or, uh, of, of how to do the um, patterns, and then... They, these were the ones that, some of the ones that were sent back to me, and then I translated those into patterns that go on the structure. So if you go and see the structure, you'll see these patterns, and they've been made from the kids' um, uh, patterns that I showed you at the beginning. I hope you can see that there. <laughs> I have been true to the patterns. And um, so just embrace the unknown and let your mind go where you want it to go or not. And thank you for listening.